All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Costream TV. We are officially done with season one, week nine, and this week I really focused on a single character. We were asked if we can prepare a new tank for the raid team since we lost a specific buff. So that is what this week was completely focused on, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit today. We're going to talk about how this new class that I'm playing feels in keys at the eye level that it was doing keys and what we completed on it overall and if the thumbnail didn't give it away well i'm gonna tell you we are now playing a dark iron monk and of course we are sporting the tier 3 set that you can get from the anniversary event that is still live i don't know if you guys still remember that that is a thing but this monk started off at it as just my herbalism and mining character that's all i would do on him he would go fly around no denote on my spare time and he would pick up herbs and he would pick up ore and then he would send it to my crafters so that way they could craft my files my flasks and anything else that i may need so there wasn't a lot of time put into this character when it came to gearing so after the raid on tuesday on november 13th i was asked how quickly could i have my monk ready for raid and at which point i kind of thought well i mean i can get him ready in a couple weeks for really need him not realizing we had no monk buff i was told we have no monk buff so my journey began and i really started pushing on the monk my main focus last week was only the monk we started at 587 eye level that's kind of where he just has been sitting after hitting level 80 and hit about 585 io from just doing those like weekly twos or threes just to get a vault each week so from the very beginning i actually got some help from some of the raid team we ended up doing a small leather group and we were able to funnel my monk some of the leather so at a very low eye level i was doing eight keys i was definitely a carrier about 587 doing eights playing windwalker so there were some occasions where i didn't survive but we we had some funnels there we did a bunch of keys that way then i also actually sat down and i did a whole bunch of delves tier eight delves are still actually very good for getting that hero track gear especially if you get a map you get a guaranteed piece so i started soloing a whole bunch of tier eight delves just doing all the bountifuls getting the coffer keys and opening them up i did manage to get two maps considering Considering my DK has been around for as long as he has, he has only ever seen one map from a delve. My monk has already got two, so that started the journey of upping my eye level. From there, we then started running some more keys and more keys and more keys. In total, last week, we did 34 mythic plus keys, ranging from two all the way up to 12. Once the monk hit about 615 eye level, my biggest challenge was that I needed crest to upgrade my gear, but first I wanted to get at least my 90 crest to be able to craft my 636 first so that was kind of the journey i started initially some of the lower items that i could if i could level using the ruined crest or the weather crest i would but i kind of got hard stuck at around 615 eye level but at that point i started trying brewmaster in these eights nines and ten keys and it felt really good actually it felt very healthy i wasn't afraid of my of falling over my health didn't ping pong like i'm used to on the dk so that made a difference and the healer i was running in said he'd actually prefer to heal my monk because my health isn't all over the place and he knows when he should or shouldn't heal me since the those keys were actually going so well what we decided to do is we got some 12s just pushing up our keys so we tried some 12 i did a 12 city of threads and a 12 stone vault neither of them were finished because we just kind of hit a bit of a wall not due to my eye level however it was just kind of a group decision that yeah we could finish this but let's just drop it and actually get the higher level of crest and that's exactly what we did but doing a 12 city of threads on that first boss i actually didn't have any challenges staying alive same with the second boss i was able to get through a lot of the the subjugates on the first boss without any challenges whereas i remember doing it on my dk and i basically went from 100 to 10 percent if not being one shot so the difference in how the monk feels at 615 eye level to my dk who is 630 is actually extraordinary i even compare this to my 616 warrior and actually monk feels safer than the warrior because i have the ability to heal myself and using stagger and using my bruise expel harm and then my instant vivify i feel much safer even over my warrior when i'm playing the monk even doing the very first pull in stone vault where you have to pull that entire first hallway the monk at 615 item level yes i dipped pretty low still felt very safe compared to the death knight where i tried to run down that hall i have to hit the first pack with marrowren to build up my bone shield stacks by the time i get to the middle and i'm pulling things in it's so scary because i sometimes don't have enough ruining power to set up the monk dropped but i popped my fortifying brew I used expel harm and then the healer knew that if he gave me a heal he would top me right up and that's exactly what happened i was able to survive that pull and stay safe and we downed it relatively quickly without many deaths. I actually ended up rolling into an AoE ground stomp and that's what killed me when the group managed to kite back and we spawned right at the beginning and I picked it up and we carried on and we were able to finish it. So overall
overall, so far, my experience with the month has been very positive, right? So in that, we managed to do 34 keys on the monk. Most were upgrades, 26 of which were upgrades. We had five disbands and three completions, meaning we finished the key but did not time it. So I'm very happy with how the monk performed. I got a ton of crests. This is kind of what I was aiming for. I did craft my one piece. And what we'll do is we'll quickly jump into the game and I'll show you guys kind of what his item level is right now and some of the gear that we have gotten. So with all of that said, here is what the monk's item level looks like right now. Like I said, we've upgraded as many pieces as we can. We did craft our 636 belt, so we do have that with our Nerubian embellishment. We do ha also have our four piece. We were very lucky, and because we did that leather funnel, I got some pieces that I could catalyze directly that were hero, hero track. So all of our tier pieces are hero track. However, obviously not all of them can be upgraded because like I said, I'm currently restricted on crests. That is what's holding me back from upgrading my gear more i was lucky i got my best in slot weapon from Arakara, which i was able to upgrade and i did get two pretty decent trinkets i got the Arakara sack brood and the empowering crystal from dawnbreaker and then we also got a collection of rings that we can use we got the ritual commander's ring from necrotic wake the band of roving scalawag from siege of boralis and then also in our bags we have a few other rings that we can play with that are crit haste crit mastery verse mastery so we've got options when it comes to our rings that we can play with but all of our gear currently is hero track anything that i could upgrade to max eye level i did all the other pieces currently we are just waiting for press to be able to upgrade and the final piece that we will most likely craft is our wrists because our wrists are currently at 606 and that'll most likely be the next thing i craft or a rig i'm not sure which way i'm going to go yet but that's how the monk's looking he so after really having just the weekend and monday to really push the monk up he finishes week nine at 617 eye level and one of the other things i did to kind of try to get some more gear is i did try to pug heroic raid on the monk now i am so used to running raid with the raid team that i'm not really used to going to a pug and failing at some of these bosses right and that's kind of exactly what we got i was aiming to get six of the bosses down in the raid however i only managed to get four just because of how difficult it was for the pugs that i was joining to get through it now i found one we did bloodbound thick room and ration on and then it fell apart and then i tried to find another one that did kaiveza i didn't really have luck with that kaiveza was a bit of a mess it would start really well we'd get to that last phase then it just kind of got very messy with portals and everything that was going on so i went back and actually just did all Grax for my last kill so we will have the two raid vault slots and we will and for mythic plus we will have three of the mythic plus vault slots speaking of mythic plus here's where the monk actually finishes after only a few days of playing so he kicked off at basically zero i think it was at 585 io when he kicked off just doing those low keys and we finished the week off at 25 26 so i like i said i went really hard on him my dk currently is only 20 27 11 so he's not far off from catching him we were able to get 11s done 10s and many many nines and eights right so he is in a very good spot i'm very happy with how the monk's looking i do plan on trying to push up these these all up to 11 and then getting him into a few 12s and see if it feels safer on the monk or the dk to be pushing those keys and jumping into game, we're going to open the Monk's Vault. We're going to keep it in Windwalker because that gives us a chance at some weapons and some trinkets that we want. And out of the raid, it also gives us a chance at getting the weapons. But it doesn't look like we got those today. Taking a look, we got Sikram's Endless Arsenal, another trinket. And then we have Hero Track Haste Mastery Boots. We do need boots, but let's kind of hold off on that. We've got the Gear Launcher, which is a no main stat trinket. It's not terrible. It does. It is one of our better trinkets, but not our recommended. We have wrists that we so bad need crit mastery and then we have gloves that are haste mastery as well taking a look at our dells we have crit verse finger which is a really good finger as well crit verse being our best stats we have haste mastery wrists and then we also have the scroll of momentum, uh, momentum which is just a trinket this we never got our last of up to tier 8 i think it was only tier 3 so this doesn't matter as much but overall we are not looking very good for the monk's first ever vault so the way i'm looking at this just to not have to take the sockets although our vault isn't the greatest and yes some people would say take the hands catalyze them and then you have mythic track hands i already have six of six hands and i want to save the catalyst charge what i could actually do is take the wrists which are a 17 eye level upgrade and then actually craft my boots right because then that way i'll get 636 boots crafted and then i can upgrade this up to 639 it's crit mastery i would prefer crit verse but i think for now taking the crit mastery isn't a bad thing so i think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take these wrists we're gonna throw them on and then we're gonna craft our boots just before raid with the embellishment 
And the monk gets to kick off the week with an 11 era Kara. And let's take a look at what this looks like after we equip. We go up to 618 item level after equipping the wrists. And then I'm hoping when we get our boots upgrade, that will bring us up to at least 620. And so on the monk this week, I do plan on pushing him even more. Now that he's ready for raid, I'm hoping that he can get into most of the raid bosses, at least the first four in mythic. And then that way he can get those vault slots, those mythic vault slots, hopefully some decent mythic gear out of that. And we can see his eye level climb up to the 625 nearer to 630. And then I will farm out the crest to upgrade my mythic track gear as much as I can up to 639. And then I am also hoping to actually try out some 12s on him. I think now that his eye level is moving up quite quickly, I think it should be reasonable to achieve 2700 rather quickly i could most likely do it this week if i'm only focusing on 11s and 12s i think i should be able to do it with a monk but i do want a crest farm so i might not get 34 keys done this week but i'm sure i'll get a lot to get those crests up to get my upgrades up so that way even going the next week we have an even higher eye, eye level at the end of week 10. And even though we didn't really play the Death Knight much this week, we still do have a vault because the Death Knight did get taken to raid. So we will have the three raid slots available on the DK. We're going to open it in Frostbeck. He will have two Mythic Vault slots and one Heroic. And take a look at what we get. We do have the Egg, which is fantastic if I run it for Frost. And then we also have Crit Haste Avoidance Neck Piece. We do already have our best in slot neck in regards to stats. So even though that's a nice upgrade, I may actually take the egg because that takes me off of that list of those who need it. And maybe we'll play Frost a little more. So that's actually not a bad great vault for the DK this week, having gotten the egg. And he doesn't have a key, which is actually hilarious, but we'll get one later and see what we get. And we most likely won't see as much play on the Death Knight this week because I once again will focus on the Monk if that's what the raid team needs. So really not much to go off on the Death Knight there. All right, and let's touch on some of the mounts that we got this week. So for those of you who watched the Warcraft Direct 30, they were, there were Twitch drops, two of which was a Twitch, which was an anniversary bundle, which came with two mounts here being one of them, the Calder Eye Warwolf. It's basically your saber with the Night Elf armor attached to it. Nothing fancy, we've seen these before. And then the other mount we got is the Black Rock War Saber. Obviously, this is just the Horde gear slapped on top of a saber. I really do like this mount. I prefer this one over the Calder Eye. Again, it was like one of the sabers we've seen in the past, but I am very happy with this one. I have favored it, and I will use it in those dungeons and events that only require a ground mount. And then the final piece of the puzzle that I'm going to talk about this week, we've been going over it. This will be the third week now that we're talking about this, because like I said, I've started gold farming and just kind of doing runs here and there of older content, picking up team mogs, crafting stuff, finding things that actually sell on the Oxid House. So uh, each week I'm giving you guys a quick update of where I was at. Originally, we started with nothing. We got up to about 150K and then we got up to 290K the following week. Something along those lines, I'd have to look back at the video. At the beginning of week nine, we were at 290K in our war bag. Now, every time I make about 10k i put it into the war bank and that's kind of how i'm gauging how much i'm actually making i do also have tsm which so it would show me as well but i'm kind of using this so that here's like my extra where i can throw throw the gold into and we can kind of visibly see what's going on so finishing week nine we are at 890 thousand gold that means we made a profit of about 600 thousand now obviously that's not all profit because i was crafting in there however i've made my money back on those crafts that i've spent so let's say about 100 to 120 thousand of that may need to go back to my crafter to continue crafting more items although it only costs me about 25k to craft and i make a total of 60k and i sell the items that i craft for 60k total making about a 35k 35k gold profit every time i craft these items so not at not bad at all we're at 890 currently across the auctioneers that i have i have about 3 million gold in the auction i recently found a very unique uh, transmog item from Shadowfang Keep that's worth about 500k. So if that sells, that'll look really nice. We'll take a look at where we're at again with this next week as well. And so that is it. That is the end of our discussion about week nine of Dragonflight. It has been a good week. I've actually really enjoyed hopping on a new character and grinding out those keys. Since we're only doing eights, we're not experiencing those frustrations of pugs performing poorly, incompleted keys or things going wrong. And I've mostly ran these with people that I know. I've had at least two people at most times with me that are competent players, very good at their class. And we've run in full groups for a lot of those keys as well, which have been really fun. And since you're doing eights, you can really plow through those keys with a good group. And that's exactly what we've been doing. So week nine has 
been all about the monk. Moving into week 10, it will continue to be all about the monk and we will most likely do some more gold farming. I'm wondering if it's going to slow down, but if I get lucky and some of these auctions continue to sell, I may be able to make another five, 600,000 gold in one week. So not a lot has been going on for me. Like I said, it's been a single character focused week, but I am looking forward to taking the monk into Mythic Raid this week. We'll be streaming that on Tuesday and Thursday and then streaming some more on Sunday for you guys, some of our progress and what we're up to. Let me know what you guys want to see more of. How has your week been going? What are you up to in the game today? Are you still playing? I know some of you guys in the comments previously said that most of your friends have stopped playing, so you have too because things are just too difficult or you're not enjoying some of the gameplay. So let me know. Have you tried alts? Have you played other characters? What have you been up to in the last week and are you still enjoying the War Within? And have you found other things that can keep you occupied in the game? Like for example, gold farming for me is that new thing, but if I've got some downtime, I do. What do you do with your spare time when you're bored? Is it achievements? Is it gold farming? What do you like to do? Let me know in the description down below, but for now, we're going to go jump into week 10. We're going to farm out some more crests and push the monk up to where he needs to be to start performing in those 12s. And I'm hoping to get some more videos out for you guys when the monk starts completing 12s and upgrading them. But until then, I will catch you guys in the next video or in Kazalgar. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Peace out.